Let me just push the meeting minutes into chat and we can get started. All right. Good day, everyone. Welcome to this week's Qbert Community Meeting. It is the 24th of January, 2024. Um, yeah, welcome. Hope everyone's having a, 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 a good day, night, morning, wherever you are. Um, normally, we start and we ask if anyone um, that is new or hasn't taken the time to introduce themselves does so. Um, I'm familiar with all of the names in the list. However, if anyone is a regular that I'm familiar with that hasn't introduced themselves, then um, yeah, you are more than welcome to take a minute here and say good day to everyone. Fair enough. All right, we will get right into this, uh, have a look at the schedule. Uh, I think it's two weeks time minus one day, uh, the 6th of February, if memory serves, here it is. Uh, feature freeze for 1.2. Um, so hopefully everyone is aware of that. And if you're not, then you should be now. And our GE, uh, our GA is three weeks after that on the 27th of February. Um, yeah, if you've got any questions, uh, just shout them out. Um, we don't have a large group here, so I probably won't pause um, for comment on all things. We'll take a look at our upcoming CFP, which I think I was out all last week and haven't updated it. Uh, yes, Open Source Summit closed. So if you wanted to go submit to that, hopefully you already did. However, DevConf in Bruno in the middle of June is still open. It is open until March 3rd. Um, highly recommend it. If you've got any ideas whatsoever, um, please submit them. It is a great conference. And I am very much hoping that we'll have a bunch of Qbert people there. Um, coming up, we've got FOSDEM uh, 24 at the start of February. That's not, is that an extra two, week, two weeks? Two weeks away. Um, we got a few things there, and then uh, the schedule was for KubeCon EU24 was announced um, today. I haven't updated this, but we've got um, representation from the Qbert community in uh, three sessions that I'm aware of. We've got a maintainer talk from the um, six scale folks. We've got um, a contrib fest, which will be really interesting, and. Um, We've got one of our maintainers, Fabian, is doing a keynote with one of our end users. So that'll be super cool. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm not aware of, there might be some extra CFPs. Like I said, I was out last week. Uh, I will update this um, before next we meet. Um, but if you're aware of any uh, events with CFPs open, uh, by all means, let me know. I'll throw it here and I'll... Uh, um, all right. Um, and I can promote it to other people. So we can have multiple Qbert people there. Um, Ed said that it's worth noting a pre-release alpha of version 1.2. Uh, what do you mean by that, Ed? Do you want to speak to that? His mic is not working. Um, okay. Does that mean anything? Because uh, we've got our alpha release, which went out in December, I think. And then we'll have our RCs happening, I think, weekly between Feature Freeze and GA. Is anyone who does have a mic working able to speak to what Ed is talking about? Uh, okay, let's put a link in. Let's have a look. I put the wrong thing. Aha. All righty. Yes, so if you are interested in getting the early release, uh, the alpha release here at 1.2. Oh, it was released yesterday. Very cool. Um, and look at that big change log. 
something that I will speak to in just a second. Um, yeah, so is there, uh, Ed, did you want to add that to the agenda in case anyone needs a link or sees the recording and is interested in um, how to find this and is interested in playing around with Yoast? Alpha release. Um, I'm just going to presume you do. Uh, in which case, thank you. Um, yeah, speaking of this, uh, so we now have the, the alpha release, um, which means you can see the upcoming changes already. However, um, Daniel Hiller has recently built a, I think it's a weekly or a daily script, um, which pulls our unreleased, uh, the, the release notes for the PRs that we expect to be in our upcoming release. Um, into this, it's in SIG release, upcoming changes, uh, .md, uh, not where the changes. So it's basically the same as our change log, but it's um, for the next release. And so if you're very curious um, what might be included in the upcoming release of Kubert, then this is the link to go to. Ah, there we go, it's updated daily. Um, and while some things, it does happen, um, might not get through all the way, they might get pulled at the last minute for whatever reason. Um, this is as close to um, certain as we can say <laughs> before it comes. But uh, yeah, these these are the PRs, the notable PRs that will be in our upcoming release for Kubernetes. So this will be a constantly updating document. Um, there will be a short gap immediately before, uh, immediately after our GA of most recent uh, release. Um, yeah, and so and this is something we also want to build for um, further horizons, um, just to help people kind of get an idea of like, what, what is actually gonna be in the next Qbert rather than always looking back. Um, cool, uh, yeah, I don't know if I've already said it, but I've said it in the minutes. Uh, special thanks to Daniel Hiller for bringing it to life. All righty, network binding plugin docs. Um, this sounds like an ed thing. Oh, cool. Um, and in which case, um, I just see that we've got a new person, um, Mirza. Uh, normally, we're opening, we open with our uh, welcomes and introductions. If you'd like to take a minute now, um, by all means, you're welcome to introduce yourself, um, say who you are and, and why you're here. We'd love to hear from you. And if you don't want to, that's also fine. Well, that's all right. If you don't want to uh, introduce yourself now, you're welcome to um, to take supplemental for next week or the following or whenever. I think uh, Alexander Wells has said that he's been coming to this for many years and he still doesn't introduce himself. He's just waiting for the right time. Um, so Ed doesn't want to, uh, thank you, Ed. Uh, doesn't have anything else to add. So we've got um, updated documentation, I believe. Um, here, I haven't heard anyone say anything for a while. So, like, you, I'm sharing my screen. Like, like I'm not talking about stuff of anyone, am I? I'm going to presume not. Um, please let me know in chat if uh, it sounds like my audio is not working, which has happened in the past. All right, so I think this is what Ed wanted us to have a look at. We've got some network binding plugin um, alpha feature documentation. Um, so I remember correctly, this was a big deal for version 1.1, where we're now making it um, and anyone from the Oaken team, please correct me if I'm wrong in any of this. Um, it's now, I guess, a more modular design for network plugins, um, meaning that you can kind of choose what you want to have, which also makes it easier if you want to kind of bring your own network plugin 
um, Qvert will work easier with that kind of thing rather than having it built into the product itself. Um, so yeah, yeah, please jump in correct me if that is incorrect. And I've seen for version 1.2, we're adding some additional um, plugins from the ones that were introduced in version 1.1. So now we've got some shiny new user guide documentation and also some um, similar looking documentation in our Qvert document docs. Here we go. So thanks to those guys. Um, Daniel, uh, you're already writing, but uh, yeah. Hey, yeah. Um... Can you can everyone hear and see me okay? Yeah. yeah. Okay, thanks. I just wanted to uh, give a quick shout out that we have changed the pre-submit checks for the pull requests that are actually um, running. Um, so you might have noticed that not every pull request check might be running at once right now. There are some of the pull request uh, pre-submit checks that are um, showing up as expected, but not being triggered. This is by intent um, because we have created a plugin that does a two-phase run on the pull requests right now. So that um, at the moment, only the pull request uh, pre-submits for the latest Kubernetes version are being run. And the other run, uh, the other ones are only being triggered when uh, the PR review process has been finished with an LGTM and approved, and then those are being uh, kicked off. So just as a quick shout out for more details, uh, please take a look at the Kubernetes dev mailing that explains the phase plugin. Um, there should be everything explained. I just wanted to uh, to give the shout out to Orshobal, who uh, I think cannot be here today to um, himself speak up, but I just wanted to to thank every uh, to thank everyone um, with respect to that initiative because it's helping us on uh, providing um, uh, easier or or a shorter feedback cycle for everyone. I hope um, that this makes sense somehow. Are there any questions to this one? Okay, so I guess not. Then, yeah, like I said, thanks for your attendance. Um, I hope, uh, and please just uh, give us a quick shout out if there is something that you expect not to be working as expected after you have read this email of, about the face plugin. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Daniel. Um, all right, we'll move to the open floor. Um, yeah, so Cuba is moving towards graduation. Um, we're not there yet, but uh, one of the things we're hoping to get is um, some more end users on our adopters file. So um, to help us, um, if you or someone you know is using Kubevert and is not on our adopters file, we would love to see them. Um, we uh, also request that you share this message along to anyone. And also, if you're on uh, Twitter slash X or whatever it is, um, I've just sent in a tweet uh, about, I don't know, 30 minutes ago. Um, I've got the link there if you could please share that uh, for maximum um, sort of coverage. Um, yeah, that'd be great. Uh, it'd be really good to have uh, more of these end users there. Um, as a, we know a lot of people are using Kubevert. Um, we can't demonstrate that to the CNCF without them on our adopters file. It's kind of as simple as that. Um, so yeah, thank you very much. And uh, Andre, you've got the next two. Thank you. I uh, just wanted to ask about current state of Kubevert Cloud Provisioner, uh, Cloud uh, Cluster After Scaler, and CSI plugin. Has anybody? Uh, is any any anyone who runs Kubernetes as a service using Kubevert? Do you have any success stories? I just would like to get the contacts, maybe to share notes with. Uh, well, there's the HyperShift product, which is a Red Hat mm -hmm. OpenShift um, kind of bare metal. Um, you know, allows you to deploy, you know, subclusters within your bare metal um, cluster. And that uses Kubert CSI and um, at least the cloud um, provider as well. 
I don't know about the auto scaler. Um, but yeah, those components are, are used in our, you know, Hypershift, which is a product we sell for Red Hat. That's interesting. Um, is there any community, I guess, in uh, Slack or? Uh, yeah, Cluster is... API provider convert mm -hmm. is probably the main one. Um, and for questions on the CSI plugin, yeah, probably um, just the regular virtualization or, or Kubert dev probably be best for that. Yeah, I got it. Uh, I saw those projects. I just looking for community, um, maybe to some people who I can share my thoughts with. Yeah, I would definitely check out Cluster API Kubert. I think that's the closest to um, to to you know community. Okay, thank you. Um, I I maybe this fits your bill. Um, both CoreWeave and Saivo are now our end users um, adopters file. They both provide uh, Qbert as a service using Qbert on their back end. Um, I know that Saivo don't use the, um, the Kappa Qbert project, mm -hmm. um, but I'm 98% certain that they use the CSI plugin. Okay. I just uh, try to introduce itself uh, just a little. We trying to adopt Kubevirt on top of Talos. We do a platform for other clouds to pay Kubernetes as a service. We just started, we already have some clients. Uh, just uh, looking forward to what will happen. Thank you. The next question is uh, about network binding plugins. And if there does anybody consider using eBPF to uh, bind tap interface of virtual machine to the batch interface of uh, container? I heard Kata containers using this successfully. Um, the, were there any consideration on that for Kubeweird? Probably nobody heard about that. Okay. It wasn't explored. Yeah, I just uh, talking, is there any ideas about that because I just heard this idea today from uh, one team who also trying to adopt Kubeweird and I just noticed hey why not it might be a really interesting idea okay I think we can go forward cool thank you for bringing that up um, all right Igor yeah, hi. Hi, Andrew. Hi, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes, we are. Yeah, awesome. So, um, yeah, I want to bring up uh, that topic. I tackled that issue or uh, that uh, limitation while working on, uh, while still working on uh, enabling uh, over commit on the nodes using swap, but it's not something I want to talk about. Actually, I want to talk about the the fact that we don't have in the user guide, we don't have a per release uh, user guide. And uh, now that I am uh, working on the over commit uh, topic, I noticed that I will have to uh, to change the user guide because the behavior was uh, changed since uh, release 1.1. And so I actually, <laughs> I'm looking for uh, maybe also, not looking, but uh, I'm, asking for uh, if there are any maintainers here of user guide and the Qbeard website, so I can um, uh, join them or uh, offer them the, to create some kind of a task force in order to enable it on our user, uh, user guide uh, website. I'm not uh, that uh, of a web developer, but uh, you know, I, I, can, uh, I can help with that. 
So if anyone would like to join that effort, I will be happy to hear from him or her uh, on Slack or on the Qubit or on the Google that mailing list. Um, I, I am uh, one of those people. I have an interest in docs. I, for a long time, I was a technical writer. I'm, I saw your email. I have not yet written back to you. Um, oh, cool. Okay. And part of that, and I'll, I'll put this in an email because um, I haven't really had a chance to explore how we would do this in the Qubit user guide. Um, but um, thinking about how we've dealt with it um, from a like a Red Hat product point of view when I worked on technical documentation, um, it's I, I worry that it's too much. Um, I, I hate to be a naysayer when it comes to any kind of documentation um, improvements because I'm 100% totally on board of those things, which is why I haven't yet explored it yet. Um, but it it can be a real um, if I'm not if I'm allowed to say it's in the community meeting pain in the ass to maintain. Um, so uh, yeah, so but yeah, absolutely, let's take this offline. Um, I'll add my thoughts to your thread. Um, mm -hmm. The way that we, it, it has, as far as I can tell, historically been covered in our user guide is by basically um, putting in the text itself saying, from this version on, we have this. And um, to my mind, that, that is an easy, um, it's an easy solve. Yeah. And it means that like, it, it ties it to a version in the documentation and it, it means that it, it is always tied to that regardless of how um, things progress. And then when someone notices it's wrong, it can be easily removed. Um, and that is a, a very low bandwidth solution um, to this because even using, um, using, using GitHub mechanisms um, and having different releases for different branches, um, you basically then have to think every time you have a PR to the documentation, does this affect which of those versions? And so there's every single PR that has this additional question, do I need to cherry pick to the previous version? Um, and so it's as a, like this hidden kind of mental bandwidth that gets added to it. Um, but like I said, I've already gone to too much detail. Uh, sorry for boring everyone. Um, I'll put my thoughts more coherent into a, um, into yeah, I will definitely take the simple solution of this issue. Then I will just uh, do as you said. Well, no, I, look, let's let's keep talking about it because maybe someone has a much better idea than what I've experienced in like a you know more complicated doc set. Um, but because yeah. I don't want to just from that experience, I don't want to immediately shoot this down. I really I really love uh, interesting ideas when it comes to improving documentation. So uh, let's at least give this uh, a bit more chance to breathe and think um, and talk about it. Absolutely. Thank you very much for suggesting it. Thank you. Sure. Yeah, that's it from my side. I just provided some links on previous talk uh, about eBPF plugin. Uh, there are links to scheme and design for Kata containers. I think we could consider something similar to Kubevirt. Cool. Let's try my mic now. Is it working? Hey, I can hear. Yeah. So well, the only thing that I can add there is that you could try it if you if you are able to to define the ABPF things rules using uh, as part of the CNI step. Then you can do it. Yeah, I think it should be now easily implementable, is implementable uh, using new plugin API for network plugins. So the only, the only, I mean, the only thing that I can think at the moment is that what happens, uh, I mean, I'm not sure at what namespace this is done. Like if, if you configure it, and then the pod dies. It is inside. It is inside the pod. Uh, it just puts TC program on uh, interface, yeah. and it just copies packets from one interface and putting yeah. them into a different one. 
Yeah, but the question is, are these rules uh, uh, binded to the namespace or not? Done. I guess they bind it to physical interface or not physical, the virtual one. The network interface, I mean. OK. okay. But I haven't read the uh, design yet. Uh, it's just an interesting opportunity. I wanted to bring up this to the community. It sounds interesting. If you'll if you'll try it out, it's, uh, especially with the the new plugins, then we can assist you for sure. Thank you. Please go ahead. Thank you, um, Aurel. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Yep. Cool. So last week I sent a, an email to Kubert Dev regarding a developer documentation project I've started working on in the last, I don't know, month. Um, as you can see in the Slack channel, people want um, resources to help them onboard the project. As, and as you know, the project is quite big and onboarding it is not very easy. Um, so I've started a document containing at least the, the beginning or the structure of a developer documentation in regards to which components are there in the system, what are the uh, main processes. And I have currently two goals for it, as was discussed in the mailing thread. One of them is to document the entire flow of uh, the VM creation. And as you know, there are three legs to it, virtualization, network, and storage. So it's uh, not an easy task, and uh, I need help. And the second uh, goal is to document or describe what happens to a cluster after you install Qvir to it, what gets added, which uh, webhooks are registered, stuff like that. So if you're interested, there are lots of um, advantages to joining uh, this kind of a project. It helps you understand the system better. It helps you see a lot of code that you don't usually see. And it's a, a good place to see uh, chances for improvements or for refactoring. So it could be uh, beneficial for you. So if you are interested, please contact me via Slack or via mail, and I'll be happy for any contribution. And you're welcome to um, change the written on the agenda um, to make it less like an ad. Thank you, Aurel. Well, it is. Uh, Thank you very much. <laughs> um, yeah, it sounds super interesting. And um, yeah, as well, one thing I would suggest while, um, while you work on that is um, what, what can be beg, borrowed, stolen from the our current user guide documentation and what can be put in the user guide documentation and then linked from the developer documentation. If it's also uh, like the life cycle of a VM, um, might be interesting to developers and users alike. Um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I also share the same opinion with you. I also think that this could benefit uh, advanced users and also uh, regular users or casual users after this document will be completed. I think that many drawings that it will have eventually could be borrowed to the user guide and simplified and may, maybe vice versa. Yeah, sounds good. Awesome. 
Um, and also, uh, just off the top of my head, one thing that is missing that you'll potentially run into is um, uh, like concepts. We talk a lot about various things, but we don't actually explain what those things are, um, which might be really useful for the developed documentation, which can also transfer pretty easily to the user guide. Sounds good. Excellent. All right. Uh, some people have added um, some notes on this, um, the pull requests, where one can see what I'm looking at. Um, so these are reviews ongoing. Um, this is the VM rollouts. Oh, did I? Never mind. Don't. Uh, the VM rollout strategy um, is eventually loaded. There we go. Um, taking off from the uh, recently submitted design proposal. Uh, so yeah, please um, have a look into that. Um, got okay. As far as the VM rollout strategy, this. There's been murmurings that this is controversial. So if you do have concerns, please join, get involved, speak up. Let's hash it out and figure out the path forward. Is the design proposal, Stu, is that currently open or did that get merged? It is merged. It is merged, okay. <laughs> a, a person convinced against his will is still of the same opinion. We, we still need to. <laughs> All right, so you, you missed your opportunity with the design proposal, um, but now we've got a second chance for you to voice your controversial opinions or as to why this is potentially controversial um, on, on this PR. So here's your chance for revenge. Um, this says no need to review, um, so I'm not even going to look at it. Thank you to whoever put that in mind. I didn't have a chance to go through the mail list, so I'll just very quickly go through it uh, now. Um, all right, now we missed last week, which means we need to go back to the 10th of January. What have we got? Um, that means I canceled the five strikes rule. Um, I see there's a few people have mentioned that. Um, I see Stu and Daniel. There, uh, did you want to quickly speak to that, or has that been relatively resolved? The text is um, too small. I'm middle-aged. What's up? <laughs> Five strikes rule. Daniel started to talk. I'll let him. Yeah, it's all good. Um, I was just uh, um, wanting to... Uh, so Stu raised that uh, in the email. Uh, what I found a pretty pretty good idea... So we had in recent uh, months we uh, we had some problems with overly high retests for PRs. So like uh, um, it was sometimes not even by intent. Someone was just LGTM approving a PR, and then suddenly some infrastructure issues uh, occurred, and the test would fail at some point. But the retest bot just, of course has no knowledge of uh, failing infrastructure. And so he just retests again. So the thing was that at some point, some PRs might be just retested over and over again, even though they would not have any chance of succeeding somehow. And um, so Stu came up with this idea of just let's, let's take a look at when we have a couple of retests, like five, and if those still this still doesn't pass somehow, then there might be something wrong with that one. So um, we actually, we don't want to punish people with that. We just want to give the, the infrastructure somehow um, a chance to be recovering somehow. So um, that's why we are currently thinking about how to implement uh, a system that somehow stops at least the automatic retesting on PRs after five times being retested, which we currently think is a good number where probably the, um, where the five retests on a PR might be the outlier experience somehow. Um, yeah, I hope I explained the topic well enough. Um, are there any questions to that one? 
Yeah, and apologies, I didn't realize I was hot mic there for a second. Um, <laughs> in, in agreement to what you said, Daniel, but also one of the other concerns is that we had, yeah, in, in the past, since Christmas time, we've actually had at least one PR that legitimately was retested 20 times in the past. And so was it flaky or was it infrastructure? Because it was just one test. And roughly correlated with that time frame, we saw an uptick in the uh, the average number of retests to pass. And so just curious, you know, and, and that's where this rule came up is, are we introducing flakes when we do something like that? So it's just a, a measure to have a human being take a look and figure out, hey, what's going on? Cool. Uh, all right. It sounds like this has not been resolved. Um, so yeah, if if you want to have your voice heard or your opinions, or even if you just think this is a good idea, um, weigh in on the five structural threat. It is waiting for you. Um, thank you guys for explaining that. Uh, moving along. Um, this is cool. A proposal for adding Chinese language support to Cuba documentation. Um, that's on my to-do list. Um, there was no right question. Thank you for people that jumped onto that. Uh, uh, Daniel, uh, do we want to have a quick talk about the make check check tests for Flakes Lane required? Um, yeah, there was a lively discussion going on around that. So um, I so the. Just, just as a, the gist of it is that people were asking me whether we could probably make that check test for Flakes Lane required somehow because they were actually uh, seeing Flakes not being introduced um, had that lane been required. So that was the whole idea on that one. So that I, I just put up a PR on that one and was uh, uh, trying to get feedback on the on the mailing list for this one and. I think that in the end, the majority opinion was somehow that people were fearing that PRs might be unfairly punished by like, for example, like existing PRs that might have been, um, or existing tests that might have been uh, somehow triggered by changes in the files. Um, and then uh, people might suffer from that one. So current state is in a nutshell that we have, uh, where that we have uh, withdrawn that proposal to make it required because uh, um, I think that the check test for flex lane already delivers enough feedback for people to understand whether their tests are being flaky or not. Um, on the other hand, we don't want to cause too much friction for P uh, for people that want to get their PRs in. Um, yeah, that that's in a nutshell what we've been discussing. I. Actually, I can't can't um, can't recall all the nuts and bolts of the of the discussion somehow, but I guess that should be it in a in a broader sense. Cool, thank you. Um, we've got enabling VNC clipboard has a lot of comments on that. Um, I don't know if anyone here is here to speak to that. Um, or else I already talked about the Cuba development documentation, looking for help. Um, ah, here is something that has no response. Looks like a question. Windows VM unable to connect to internet. Minikube, not to explore internet connectivity. Change process. Um, all right. Uh, is there anyone on this call that um, might be able to help with this? Call for help slash maybe bug, but more like call for help. Is it an issue with Minikube or is it likely um, they need an additional step to get their um, network working for their virtual machine? Uh, 
Oh, it would be interesting for more information because if you have, if you are running Minikube, you probably have one node and then you cannot do migration. It's, uh, it's uh, definitely missing some information. I'm, this could mean rather than a live migration, that they've um, migrated the Windows VM into there from an external platform. No? Yeah, it could be. That's true. Yeah, I can reply. Thank you, Levi. Um, we talked about uh, the Qubit releases for the documentation. I've got two new ones. Uh, one is from Ben, a new awesome Kubert uh, repository. I don't know if Ben is online. He's able to talk about this, um, but he has created a list of awesome Kubert community projects and other things outside of his Red Hat time, and he's put a list together. Let's have a quick look. Um, so it's like a, a jumping off page for getting into Qubit. Um, what is Qubit? Oh, that's just that. A couple of Qubit projects to jump into. Some additional blogs. Oh, cool. And some videos from last year. Thank you, Ben. And this one from Or, uh, we talked about this, did we? Um, yes, we did. All righty. Um, which uh, I had a look at the bugs, I had a look at the flaky tests, there was nothing there. Um, which brings us to the end of our agenda. Um, uh, before we finish up, does anyone have anything that I'd like to add at the last minute before we do our wrap up? Good. Um, well, you've got an extra four minutes up your sleeve this week. It was an action-packed uh, meeting. Thank you, everyone, for, for being here, for being part of the community, and for um, all your, your questions, comments, discussion, all of that. Um, it's coming up here. Ah, cool. Um, yeah, hope you all have a lovely day, um, an even better weekend, and we'll see you all next week. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.